So when you read the question like this, where it says, in the simple Bohr model of the ground state of the hydrogen atom, um, I guess my first advice is don't panic. <laughs> if you don't recognize any of these words, there's a good chance, like if you've never heard of ground state, there's a good chance that it doesn't matter for the question, one. <laughs> and two, for anything that might matter for the question, there's a good chance that the question will explain it. So, you know, this is pulling in some examples from what will be basically physics for C for us. Um, and, uh, and you don't need to know any of the physics of force content. Uh, this is really a question about the kinematics and the forces involved in the kinematics. So, so my first advice in reading question like this is don't panic. Just read it through, see what you have and see if you have all the mechanics information necessary. So, okay. It says the electron travels in a circular orbit. Okay, that sounds good. I know how to handle circular orbit, uniform circular motion about around the fixed proton. The radius of the orbit, okay, we have r, that's good, um, is this number. And the speed of the electron is this, the same side, but okay, it's that number. Okay, for circular orbit, I have a radius and speed, that's good, because I assume eventually I'm going to need centripetal acceleration of v squared over r. Okay, let's keep going. The mass of an electron is this, okay. Um, not sure what that's useful for, but okay, I know the mass. Uh, it's asking for what is the force on the electron. So I guess I'm assuming, um, oh, you know what? If we are thinking in terms of the net force, then I don't think we have to assume anything else than what's already stated. And we are just going to invoke, well, Newton's second law. Uh, if we have a mass and we have acceleration, then the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. There is a separate question of, okay, what's providing the net force? And <laughs> for that, we'll have to wait until uh, physics 4b, which covers electrostatics. And for the actual significance of all of this, we'll have to wait until physics 4c, which actually does cover the, which actually does cover the Bohr model. So, so let me uh, draw a kind of a simple diagram. I think I, if I draw the top view, that's uh, probably enough. So I'm imagining a proton here. My electron is in circle, like in the Dr. Manhattan's logo, unless I'm told. Um, that's, I think Watchmen is the name of the comic, I think, or the movie. Um, both of which are, I think, uh, not for general audience. <laughs> In any case, okay, we have a electron around the proton, and for the purpose of the Bohr or a uh, Bohr model, we are assuming that it's actually moving in a circular path. Um, so this electron is moving at some speed, which we were given. Okay. Um, oh, and all of this is possible because of a centripetal acceleration. This acceleration is what's keeping the electron in a circular orbit. Okay, um, I guess I could draw a free body diagram, but I, this is already kind of close enough to free body diagram. So I, if I were to insist on drawing a free body diagram as a matter of good problem solving hygiene, then what I would draw a diagram of is the electron. And in this particular case, you could argue that, oh, I don't really need a free body diagram. I only want the net force. So I could, and my net force must be in the same direction as, as acceleration. So I could just say, all right, so this is my acceleration. Therefore, this is going to be my direction of net force. And I'm done. I don't have to do anything else. And, um, uh, and skip, so kind of bridging through step, standard strategy steps two and three, uh, we finally write down Newton's second law equation. Let's see where we are at. Net force, uh, which we, we, oh, we have to calculate, is given by mass times acceleration. We know the mass, we were given that. Oh, acceleration, that's gonna be V squared over R. Okay, M was already given. We have a V, we have R, 
So, so we have everything. We can just plug in the numbers. Um, <laughs> now, let me do this uh, in this particular case so that um, you can see uh, how um, unintuitive these numbers are. Let me just, uh, uh, I think, unfortunately, we are given all the numbers in the basic SI unit. So all I have to do is just type in the numbers. We have the... Uh, we have the mass of the electron, 9.11 times 10 to the power of uh, minus 31. So let me enter 31 minus. Okay, that's the mass of the electron in basic SI unit. You multiply that with the speed. Uh, meters per second is the basic SI unit of speed. So um, 2.18 times 10 to the power of 6. Uh, there's a word of caution, by the way. Um, so, so I have mv squared over r. So when I do this and then square, it's going to all work out fine. But if somehow if you're not using the 10 time, if you're not using the provided e notation in your calculator, and instead you're spelling out some number times 10 to the power of whatever, then put parentheses around it so that order of operation works out. Uh, for this compact notation, this whole thing counts as uh, one discrete unit. So when I square it, it'll square that one discrete unit. Okay, so mv squared, now over r, so divided by the radius of the um, orbit. So that's 5.28 times 10 to the power of that's this, minus 11, so 11 and then minus. Okay, so mv squared over r, that's it. And you get, oh, 8.20 times the 10 to the power of uh, minus 8 Newton. So um, 8.20 times the 10 to the power of minus 8. Yeah, it's a very small number. It's a, so, you know, 10 to the minus 6 is micro. So I guess I can use the word nano. So 10 to the minus 9 is nano something. So this is 82 nano newton. 82 lowercase n, uppercase n. How small is a nano newton? I don't think I have a point of reference. Um, so if we are holding up a one gram object in the gravitational field of Earth, the force that you're exerting on the one gram thing, it's, uh, um, so that's 10 to minus three kilogram, uh, multiplied by 10, so 10 to minus two Newton. Um, so, so 10 to minus two Newton is how heavy a one gram thing is. And this quantity here is a million times less than that. So, but that should be the correct number. Um, it's, uh, I guess at this point, really the thing that I can highlight is that um, the kind of the scale of numbers between our macroscopic world and the uh, uh, microscopic things like the Bohr model, it's going to be very different. So you do really have to work to build the intuition for these more microscopic situations. Fortunately, you won't see a lot of that because with these setups, I, I have really limitations on how more interesting things I can add. You can see here that um, this is a very boring step. Like this is maybe the easiest possible question or it doesn't involve a lot of those steps of the standard strategy.